بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وأسعد الله صباحكم جميعا مساءكم صباحكم أنا مختلط الليل بالنهار بال... <تصفيق> نظرا لأن المؤتمر لغة رسمية بال... باللغة الإنجليزية ووجود ضيوفنا الأجانب اسمحوا لي أتكلم بال... بالإنجليزي Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And I'm delighted to be with you uh, this morning to share my thoughts on corporate governance, especially in relation to the immense changes taking place in the region, especially here in Saudi Arabia with the epicenter uh, in Riyadh. Uh, but also uh, changes that we heard about in the UAE uh, and the rest of uh, the region. I want to uh, express my personal, personal appreciation and admiration for the Pearl Initiative, for the leadership uh, by uh, our young uh, leader here, uh, Badr Jafar, and his esteemed father, my friend, uh, Hamid uh, for uh, taking this initiative on, uh, not only initiating it in the UAE, but spreading uh, their uh, noble uh, goal of promoting higher standards in corporate governance, accountability, and transparency in our region. Uh, and as I mentioned, it is very appropriate to have this discussion at this juncture uh, here in Riyadh. Let me also say uh, at the beginning that it's very dangerous for me to speak uh, right after Amin. For one thing, we do think alike, and we are students of a great organization that has good governance in its DNA. And the other reason is we use the same speechwriter. <laughs> So if you feel deja vu, uh, there is <laughs> <laughs> the size of the global economy, ladies and gentlemen, has reached $80 trillion, comprised, as we know, of a complex network of interdependent sectors, cross-border linkages of trade and investment and supply chains that do encircle our planet. Today, an ever-growing number of increasingly diverse companies dominate the landscape. Although governments and intergovernmental agencies still play an essential role through policy and regulatory frameworks, as well, of course, as th through government-owned enterprises engaged in commerce, and we just heard from Amin about the role that Aramco plays. In such a complex, competitive, and challenging envir environment, how do companies re reconcile divergent interests, avoid bad decision making, minimize the risk of systems and process failures before they take place, and still succeed day in and day out? The answer is clear, and I'm not saying it because we're here with the topic of our event, but the answer is corporate governance. Good governance is not a nice to have luxury, but a must have prerequisite for sustained success and maintenance of what I call the social license to operate for any company or commercial enterprise. By the same token, governance is not something that lives in a set, set of bylaws it's not the work of lawyers or something you put on a pretty poster of corporate values. In, instead, good governance exists on a higher plane, bringing together an uncompromising commitment to integrity, a top-to-bottom system of well-defined roles, responsibilities, and accountabilities, and effective execution as well as a reporting structure 
that provide proper oversight and control and the right delineation of responsibilities. And let's face it, in today's world of fast and free information, regulators and consumers alike are more sophisticated and their level of scrutiny is higher than ever. And in these days of social media, social trust in an institution can evaporate in a matter of minutes rather than the weeks or months it used to take. And as examples like Enron, Bearings, WorldCom, or Arthur Anderson demonstrate, when any company, regardless of size, scope, or sector, forfeits the trust and confidence of its stakeholders, it irreversibly loses the foundation of its commercial success. No matter how sound its business model, how strong its brand and recognition globally, or the dominance of its market. In other words, poor governance in a company's operation can kill that organization the same way cancer will fatally bring down a human. So for me, that's what's at stake in our discussions today the success of our companies and institutions, and with it, the future prospects for our societies and economies. Now, for, the, for those of us in the kingdom, those stakes are particularly high because of the growing importance of the private sector in our economy. In fact, we're betting everything on the private sector. Saudi Vision 2030, which provides the blueprint for transforming our nation's economic, cultural, and social spheres, calls on the private sector to lead economic growth and sets a target of expanding its contribution from 40% of GDP at present to 65% by 2030. That's impressive, and it's already a formidable challenge but when you consider that Saudi Arabia's GDP itself is also targeted to more than double by 2030, then the true scale of the task ahead becomes even more apparent. Clearly, we need to build greater capacity and capability within the private sector in light of increasingly bold aspirations. These aspirations include developing local companies into regional leaders, national champions becoming global front, front runners, unlocking new sectors through our sovereign wealth fund, the PIF, growing and opening our capital markets for international investors, and unleashing massive latent potential in such sectors as logistics, retail, tourism, mining, advanced manufacturing, technologies of the fourth industrial revolution and services from finance to healthcare to education. But strong private sector growth and the development of world cl class economic engines are conditional on two principles in my opinion. First, delinking the activities of the private sector from over reliance on government expenditures and instead relying on a standalone commercial potential, and second, achieving true global competitiveness. And to be sure, the ability to compete locally, regionally, and internationally will require strong governance from Saudi and regional companies, large and small. <coughs> Unfortunately, some may believe that corporate governance is primarily the concern of large companies whether they're state-owned, publicly traded, or privately held. For sure, ethical lapses and other types of failures of governance in major enterprises can have a devastating impact and do command the headlines. But I would argue that good governance is essential for any company of any size in any sector and with any ownership profile. 
There are many large well-run companies in our region covering energy, petrochemicals, aviation, telecommunications, finance, and banking, as well as other sectors that we could be truly proud of. And they are recognized for the fantastic governance standards they set. And many of them are with us in the room. I see Sabic, we talked about Aramco, I see Lubna Leyan and, and uh, her family-owned enterprise with, uh, with, with recognized strong governance. But we should recognize, but we should acknowledge that others in the region exhibit significant gaps in governance and performance. Recognize that there is still room for improvement and recall as we undertake the discussions today some of the high profile and indeed very tragic failures in the region which were consistently invariably underpinned by poor governance. And I don't need to mention names. When it comes to smaller private companies, there is also a fair bit of catching up to do. And with rapid growth in the private sector, the need for sound governance will become even more acute. Because micro, small, and medium enterprises known as MSMEs and family-owned businesses are indispensable. In advanced economies, they are at the heart of economic growth and employment creation and the data proving the criticality of MSMEs to national economies are so overwhelming that the debate is not about whether they should be promoted but rather how to lift them to greater heights. In fact, Saudi Vision 2030 calls for the contribution of SMEs to national GDP to grow from 20% at present to 35% by 2030. And a number of initiatives have already been launched for this purpose, uh, including promotion with the creation of the commission for SMEs as well as a number of funding uh, instruments put in place to support them. And we heard about WAAD and what Aramco does in that area. Many of these enterprises may be more focused naturally, uh, being startups on their short-term viability and lowering costs and enhancing their governance, especially when considering that typically the owner is the manager and they consider that they know it all and they are in control. But the basic principles of corporate governance, such as ethical conduct, conduct transparency, sound accounting pra practices, protection of investor rights, and adherence to regulations are just as important, and I would argue even more important, to the fragile MSMEs and family-owned businesses as they are to large companies. Without good governance, these smaller firms not only open the door to poor performance and corruption, but also put their own very survival at risk. However, we must recognize that small businesses cannot afford to maintain large and elaborate governance systems and processes. And that means they must apply these key principles in a simplified and cost-effective manner and the development and dissemination of an optimal and cost-effective governance model suiting the needs of small businesses will benefit not only these individual enterprises, but the larger business sector and national economies on the whole. And I think it would be wonderful if out of the Pearl Initiative discussions here in Riyadh, if we build on prior work by the initiative and best practices globally and create a manual, so to speak, that we could use uh, as part of the commission uh, for, uh, for SMEs here in the kingdom, as well as our efforts in promoting good governance uh, in startups. Publicly owned enterprises, on the other hand, 
face their own set of challenges and vulnerabilities, and also require strong, sound governance. And if you look at China, for example, there have been a wave after wave after wave of uh, issues developing with the large SOE sector uh, in that country. So uh, no country is immune from these challenges and vulnerabilities uh, I talked about. And in particular, sustained government subsidies and the lack of market pressures can breed complacency. Though the continuing strength and commercial success of some state-owned companies like Saudi Aramco does demonstrate that good governance also means good, good business for such leading firms, provided the right governance structure and processes are in place. We also need to consider the unique needs of public-private partnerships which share risks and utilize resources from the public side as well as the private entities. While best practices exist for the governance of either private or public sector organization, there is little governance guidance in the public domain for the complex hybrid structures of public-private partnerships, especially considering that they are uniquely customized in different jurisdictions and domains. And our over uh, move, movement towards PPP model, I think, will introduce a new set of challenges. I therefore urge the Pearl Initiative to also focus on this area of increasing importance, taking advantage of work done in other parts of the world and relating it to the unique characteristics of our region. To me, efficient government, for sure, is not about one size fitting all needs. The models found in large corporations like SABIC, Mahadan, or STC here in the kingdom are not appropriate for smaller entities and the companies that have their own, and companies that have their own unique needs and demands. Likewise, as we discussed, Amin and I, Aramco's model, good as it is for Aramco, for sure, you cannot copy it and paste it in a publicly listed company that have a different set of regulatory and stakeholder expectations. But there are a number of essential principles that must be incorporated in any corporate governance approach. And they include, first, full accountability to shareholders, employees, customers, and other stakeholders. Second, transparency, complete transparency, and the courage to be candid and forthright. Third, a system of oversight and control that assigns clear roles and responsibilities to appropriate parties, including strong and independent board oversight. Fourth, compliant with both the intent and the letter of the laws and regulations of the jurisdictions where a company operates. Fifth, a commitment to supporting the interests and aspirations of public stakeholders, including the protection of the environment, the wise use of natural resources, and adherence to societal values. So ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by emphasizing that the private sector is the key to the region's future prosperity and to creating economic growth and employment. The businesses in our region need to grow. They need to become more globally competitive and succeed beyond our own national and regional markets. And that means that all classes of companies must embrace the imperative of best-in-class corporate governance. I would therefore like to throw down a collective challenge to all of us, which is to commit ourselves to making this region the undisputed global benchmark for good governance by 2030. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your discussions led by the Pearl Initiative are critical to making that aspiration a tangible reality. To the success of our companies and to the stability of our socio-economic systems here in the region. Therefore, I believe today's gathering is yet another step along the road to enhance governance and with it sustained profitability and prosperity. Thank you all for your attention and I wish this gathering and the deliberations it will have all the success. Thank you.